Look, I won't say anything bad. <laughs> All right. No, I'm going to need some help for Oats Day. But like a grass? I'm picking. I got it's it's what well I was cutting the grass this morning. Where is it? Still in there? Yeah, you got it. You got it. Still in there? Yeah, that, that's from the yard. Grass. My neighbors don't like it, but at 8 a.m. this when I think it's okay. <laughs> that's a bad neighbor. So I had the mower out, the, the weedy they're going. I got the whole you supposed to rain this afternoon. Oh, you're a bad neighbor. Hey, I watch everybody's weather and they all said rain this afternoon. So I said, we're up and at him, people. Yeah. All right, I'll kick it off here. As far as uh, getting uh, waivers for Dixon and, and Galligan to, to play immediately, where are you guys in that process? Uh, we haven't even started it. Um, you know, that's something that's down the line. Uh, right now, we're just uh, ecstatic with, with the fact of adding those three women to our, our program. Uh, you know, Elizabeth Balagoon, ACC Freshman of the Year, Liz Dixon, all freshman team, Kiana Smith, was all packed 12 uh, three players that we really believe can come in and make an immediate impact for us and give us depth and you know continue to keep our, our 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 program going to the next level what have you been up to i guess just since really the, the draft ended to now well you know what it's been a it, it's, it's it's been a whirlwind it's been a lot uh Good, good things. After uh, unfortunately we lost in the Elite Eight, had time to spend some time with my family uh, out in Colorado. Uh, but three fourths of that time was spent on the phone uh, arranging. As soon as these three young women went into the transfer por uh, portal, I'll, I'll, I was on the phone with all three of them. Uh, got it worked out to get them here last weekend, the weekend before, whenever that was, uh, which was the first weekend that we were allowed to have visitors on campus. So spent a lot of time calling everybody involved with, uh, with, with their families and themselves. Got it wor uh, worked out. And then, uh, you know, a, a great visit we had. Then you had the draft, uh, which was on Wednesday. So we're in New, uh, in New York on Wednesday. The family then took uh, my wife and two daughters. We went to, uh, to, to Frozen on Thursday night. Uh, on, on Broadway, which was great. They absolutely loved that. Friday morning, they flew from New York back here. I went to, to L.A. for the Wooden Awards and then took the red-eye flight back home. Our American Airlines direct flight from L.A., thank, thank goodness. It's one that we've need, uh, uh, needed for a while. And then we had the visit. So it's been, you know, a whirlwind, but good. A lot of great things, a lot of a positive momentum and then we've got recruiting the, this coming uh, weekend as well. Is it generally beneficial do you find to get recruits on campus together for visits at the same time so they can all kind of meet each other as well or did it just kind of work out it, like that? It just time? worked out that way. That that was the one weekend that we had. You know and for us you're just trying to maximize um, and all three players play different positions so nobody was going to be threat, uh, threatening each other but it, it 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 worked out. It, it was great because the following weekend, last weekend, was Easter. I, I wasn't going to bring anybody on campus for Easter weekend, um, so it, it just it, it it worked out well. Second time you've had three players drafted. What does that mean? Talk about that night a little bit, and then what does that mean for the program? Not to have just one, but the other. But Sam and everybody knew Asia. Sure. But Sam and Erica. Yeah, you know, we we went into it uh, obviously knowing Asia was going to be a, a, a top two or three pick. And then, you know, I, I talked to a few coaches. Uh, you know, they had all talked about Sam and AC, just, just a matter of where, where they might go in the draft. And then, you know, being up there in New York, the cra crazy thing about it was you saw it sooner on ESPN than we did up in New York live there at the draft. So we're getting text messages saying, hey, Sam was drafted, AC was drafted, before, before their names came up on the board. So it's, it, it's exciting. You know, all the hard work that they, that they put in, you know, all three of them told me, you know, that they wanted to have the opportunity to be a pro. Mm -hmm. And part of that is having the opportunity to see your name up on the board. And for all three of them to be drafted, I think speaks volumes for our our program, my staff, uh, what we do player development-wise. 
you know, Sam came in, I, I think, ranked in the top top 60 out of high school. AC, top 80. And now all of a sudden, they're one of 36, which is not just co- college players, but in, but in, international players as well that, that was drafted. So, you know, we, we take great pride in that. And we're really excited for them because at the end of the day, that's what their goals were, and we are help. We are able to help them uh, attain those. But before those players came came to this program, how were you looking to fill those spots on the roster? Well, I mean, it's recruiting's never ending. I mean, it's ongoing. Uh, so we had some other players that we were talking talking to, some transfers, some in- international players. Um, you know, there there wasn't any panic or anything like that, but you just you just keep recruiting. And, you know, if you do things right uh, and you treat people right, a lot of times it comes back around to you. You know, we did a home visit with both Liz Dixon and Elizabeth Balagoon back when they were seniors in high school. Uh, and it's what I tell every player. I mean, it's a tough decision at the age of 17 or 18. You know, you're trying to figure out where you want to go to college. Um, and when they called and said they were going to Georgia Tech, I, it, I do the same thing. I don't make a kid feel bad. I'm, I, I refuse to do it. You know, I ask him, is there anything that we could have done differently? And 99.9% of the time, they're like, no, it was just a feeling. And then I wish him the best. And I, I, I sincerely mean it. I say, hey, I, I hope you have a wonderful career. I hope you're an All-American. When we play each other in a game, I hope you suck. <laughs> Besides that game, I hope you're phenomenal. And I truly, it's exactly what I say to them. And they get a laugh. And then the crazy thing about it is, you know, we go play somebody and we've done home visits with, you know, their parents and the players. I will we'll actually say hi to them. You know, and a lot of the parents are like, oh, can we talk to you? I'm like, yeah, I'm just saying hi to you. You know, your daughter's doing great. Congratulations. You know, it's what being a good human is supposed to be. No matter what happens with their eligibility, who or, or how are you looking to a, the existing roster returnees to really kind of step up and, and fill voids left by Asia and Erica and, and Sam? Well, everybody's going to have to do a little bit more. Exactly what we talked about last year when Maisha graduated. Uh, Dane Evans is going to have to elevate her game. She's going to have to become more of a point guard instead of a scoring guard. Uh, you know, and we're, we've already talked about sitting down and watching film together and going over last year's game film. Uh, then, then, then you've got Jasmine Jones. Jazz is going to have to really work on her perimeter game because uh, she's going to have to be able to stretch the defense some. Uh, continue, continue to attack off the bounce, but, it, it, you know, to expand her, uh, her game. Kylie, Bianca, you know, the progress that both of those two made over, over the summer and then ended this year was pretty impressive. We're going to need those same types of strides from their junior year to senior year. Uh, both, both of them, Kylie has are, are already gone in and she's had a little cleanup surgery on her knees. She said she feels better. Uh, Bianca will be a part of four players that are going to represent the University of Louisville in the three-on-three tournament held by USA Basketball Derby Weekend down in Vegas. When she comes back, then she'll she'll, she'll win for a scope to, to get her knees cleaned up. Uh, so it, it's a little bit of everybody. I mean, everybody's going to have to do some more. Yassine Diop, you know, uh, excited to get her back for a six-year uh, with her experience. So every single player that we have, you know, we've challenged them. We put on a board. This is what you have to do to get better. And if they can do that, then our team will get better. Uh, you talked about how the visuals of the award ceremonies and the draft help uh, you in your recruiting efforts. What about, uh, you just mentioned USA Basketball. How does that really play into how you go out and recruit players with the USA Basketball program? You know what, it really, it's a wonderful opportunity for me. Uh, you know, I, I enjoy every oper- every chance I get to work with U- USA Basketball. Carol Callen, uh, they they do things first class. That's what I love about it. You're out there, you're coaching players that want to be out there, that want to be pushed, that are wearing USA across their chest, and there's a lot to be said for that. In the recruiting world, you know, everybody thinks it's a huge advantage. No, it's not. 
uh, you know, we actually recruited two players off of last year's team and didn't get either, either one of them. I'm, I'll never use it as a recruiting tool. I, I don't mention it. I don't select the team. I have no input on who makes a team. You know, that's why they have a, a, a committee that chooses the, the, the team. Uh, and I'm not going to try to make some player believe, hey, if you come here, you'll have a chance to make this. No, that, that's not what it's about. Uh, you know, I've joked with, with, with Carol, if I'm fortunate enough to win the Powerball, then I want to volunteer to be a manager at USA Basketball because it will keep me around the, the best players in the world and keep me around the game. Uh, it's just, it's, it, it's pretty surreal when you're st uh, standing there on the gold medal stand and they're playing the national anthem. You know, and I've had the opportunity to have, have, have that done three or four times. And uh, it, it, it's quite a feeling. Jeff, you talked about the returning players. Uh, Naya, the three coming in, though, now the, the freshman. Naya's had a good campaign in the in the All Star circuit. What do you expect from her and Romani and Narika as well? She's kind of the the unknown. Yeah, no, I mean it's uh, Naya. Unfortunately, came down with food poisoning at the Jordan Brand Classic. Um, you know, she said she had a bad slider the night before the game, so I told her I can guarantee her that that will not be on the pregame meal uh, for next year. But yeah, she, you know, six eight player, uh, a player of the year in, in Texas. Uh, you know, she's got the size, she's got the frame that she's going to be able to come come in. I, I believe and make an impact because of being able to handle the physicality of the game. For Romani. You know, I was really proud and excited for it because she made that, that, that change from going from Fresno to Florida to, 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 to be able to play down there in Montevideo. And it, it really helped her. It really helped her grow as a player, grow as a person. Uh, you know, she's going to have the advantage already of not being homesick because she's gone through that already. So, you know, her, her strength, her physicality is going to be something that, that she'll be challenged with, but her skill level is as good as anyone's out there. So really excited to see how she meshes uh, when she gets here. And then Norika will, will not come until August just because she's, she's going to be a part of their U19 national team uh, in Japan. And their, their training sessions are, are broke up. They'll, they'll have one in, in, in April, one in May, one in June. So there's it's like I, it's not like she's going from here to Colorado Springs right. for a training session for a weekend. So it, it's too much to ask her to try to fly home for five days and then come back. So she'll focus on basketball there, which which I think is great. So I have no concern. And then you know we'll we'll be competing in the same tournament, so I'll get a chance to see her play and a chance to visit with her when we're over there. When will the other two come? Will they? Uh, they'll both be here the uh, the end of May for June summer session. And what about your schedule next year? It's always challenging. Have you done anything different or kind of set up the same way? No, it, it, it's set up the same way. We'll actually have a lot a lot of the teams that we played on the road. Bo Boise State will, will come here and play, uh, which they're going to be better than what they were last year. Uh, they had their the, 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 the post kid from Oregon that, that sat out, so they'll, they'll have 6-4 eligible to go along with, I, I think, just about everybody returning from that team. Western Kentucky will be here. Chad... Chattanooga will, will, will be here. Uh, we're at Kentucky, at Northern Kentucky to play. I'm still hoping that's the game they retire my jersey at Northern. Uh, those 47 points are hard. We're, we're hard to come by. <laughs> I think it was harder for me to get 447 than it was for Dirt to get over 2,000. Uh, you know, and then we're working on finalizing a Thanksgiving tournament right now that, that, that has a chance to, to have a a, a, a pretty incredible field in it. Uh, so once we get that figured out, and then we'll we'll go finish off the non-conference at UT Martin, which is you know a, a great place to play because they'll have a great crowd and Ke and Kevin does a really good job with that program. How far out do you think you are from perhaps setting up a, a schedule with EKU? Uh, you know what, I've, I've talked to Coach Williams about that, and uh, I think she'd like to wait a little bit. You know, she's working on getting things together, and I've, I've really been impressed because she's had some, some good players in on, on visits already, and she's working hard. Um, but, you know, they, they won two games last season, and both, and both of them were against NAIA teams. 
So it's it's like I told her. I think it's a great challenge. She's excited, and a few players here and there, and I think she 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 can change she can change things in a hurry. Do you have a, an idea in mind how what the personality of this team might be with what you've lost and with all that you have coming in? I mean, how do you kind of see your style for next season? Well, we won't change much. I mean, we're still going to play this the 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 same way that we have played. We're going to try to get up and down the floor. We're going to try and score points. Um, you know, I've said it all along. I think fans would mu would much rather come and watch a hundred to eighty game than a fifty five to forty four. So we're 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 going to continue to try to score points. Uh, the personality of the team, I think, will 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 take shape this summer when we have. You know, nine tenths of the, the of, uh, of the players here on campus. Our transfers will be here. Our freshmen will be here. You're looking at five of our six new players will be on campus. So I think once everybody kind of gets a feel for each other, but I know they they really enjoyed the official visit. Uh, the three transfers they're just not only great players, but I was just really really impressed with the type of people they are, and that's what we're looking for. We're uh, we're looking for program kids. Uh, kids that can come in and not only help us win on the basketball court, but are going to help us win in the community, in the city, because that's why I truly believe our attendance continues to go up instead of going down, is because of the type of players we have off the floor. So even though you are losing the three seniors, there are always the way to other predictions, the offseason expectations, where fans have already talked about they wanted more, and even the program. Do you embrace that? even though you're not really sure how this team will take shape, that people are still expecting Louisville to be one of those top programs? Well, no, I mean, that's that's good. Expectations are a good thing. Uh, when you don't have them, that, that's when you need to start worrying about your job. You know, when, when there's no expectations for, other, for us to be good, then it, there, there's some, some concerns. So we are really excited about it. Uh, you know, and we'll 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 find out here in you know a few months if the two fresh if the two tra transfers from Georgia Tech, you know Elizabeth and Liz, will be able to play or not. Uh, but no matter what, I really like our returning group and our incoming freshmen. So it's going to be a team that I think is going to take a little bit of time to gel. Uh, but once we get a good feel for each other, I think we have a chance to be special. You have had for a while, it's almost like built-in leadership with Maisha and then Erica and Asia and Sam. And do you know where the leadership comes from now and do you kind of work to kind of bring that about, foster among those players? Yeah, we're, we're going to have to, uh, you know, I, I think throw a little bit more responsibility on a few players. Uh, Jazz, Jasmine Jones for one, Dana Evans, uh, I think Kylie in, in her own way can lead. Uh, and then it'd be in, in, interesting to see how our, you know, our transfers and our freshmen do, you know, because I have no problem. I mean, there, there's nothing wrong with uh, an underclassman leading, uh, you know. But what, what I challenge our returners with is, we graduated three players that I really never had to worry any day when they came to practice what I was going to get, the effort, you know. I, I didn't know if Asia had a bad day. I, I didn't know if AC had, had, had a bad day. Sam always went hard. You know, and that's my challenge to the rest of them. Are we going to be able to do, to do that? Or if you have a bad day off the court, are you going to carry that into practice? And that's what we can't have if we want to be special. So we've talked, we've talked, we've talked about that. We'll, we'll do a lot of team building and leadership, you know, things during the non-conference during our summer month here because we've got to figure out who are going to be those PP people that will step up because it is one that we've had over, over the past few years and now we don't have a definite. What do you expect from the younger players and in, in that jump from freshman to sophomore year sometime that offseason they've seen it for a year and, and that offseason can be a big jump? No it can be a challenge you know you've got Mikasa, Sagan, Lindsay uh, you know who were all kind of like thrown into things. And it's, it's a challenge. It's, it's a bigger jump than what most of them think, uh, think it is. And it's not necessarily just a skill level. It's how you play the game, taking care of the basketball, understanding at our level when you turn it over, you're just not going to run down the floor and steal it from somebody and get it back. Um, so those are the things that we've talked about with all of them. 
um, you know, I've got to get Lindsay to continue to become a, a high 40% through a three point shooter. I've challenged her to study the game uh, from a basketball IQ standpoint. Because um, you can make yourself, uh, per se, a smarter basketball player by just watching the game, studying the game. Uh, Sagan, you know, plays as hard as can be, and, and I admire that. At times, I, I'm trying to tell her to slow down. She, 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 she gets going too fast. Uh, but she had, you know, she showed some glimpses at times, and now we've got to become more consistent in practice. And then Mikasa, you know, she played more than any of the freshmen this past year, and part of it is because of her ability to, f to defend and create off the dribble. Now, for her, it's going to be continuing to develop her shot. She doesn't have to have a three-point shot. Jackie Young really did not shoot to shoot three that much. But if you can score from 15 to 18 feet, and then with her ability to get to the rim, it's going to open things up for her. I know it's early, um, but based on the current roster now, what do you think is going to be a strength for next year's team that this team probably didn't have or that this past team season this team didn't have? Well, I'm hoping, you know, if we're able to get those two, two Georgia Tech transfers eligible, if we can get Elizabeth and Liz eligible, um, you know, and then you bring in Naya, who has good size, I'm hoping rebounding it becomes a strength for us. That's something we're, we're going to work on in the offseason. It, it's got to get better for us, and I think it can. So uh, I'm hoping rebounding is going to be a big part of it. Uh, you know, we might take a little bit of a dip in three-point sh shooting, but – but that, that's okay. You just adjust, you know, with, with, with the players you have. What has Molly done in her red shirt year, and how could she be effective in that rebounding part? Molly has really made progress. I'm really exci excited for her. She has great hands. She, she can score with her left or right hand around the basket. Uh, I'm working on, get, on getting her a little tougher. Um, she's just a little bit too, uh, uh, too nice. I tell her all the time, and I, I, I tell Adrian Johnson too, I mean, how tough can you be when your mascot's a bear rat? You know, I'm like, guys, we got to get a tougher mascot. But then I, I, you know, I give the same amount of grief to Mikasa, who her mascot's a kitten. So, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to work on a few getting them a little bit more, more, uh, more custom and accepting of contact. Because Molly has, has a chance to, to, to really be good. Is that kind of similar to what you went through with Kylie in her, her freshman year? You yeah. Said she was too nice. Ky like Kylie just, you know, in, in high school, she, she shot more threes than she played around, around the basket. Molly actually played back, back to the basket some. Uh, I, Molly's just, and, and it's tough in high school too, because, you know, when you make a strong post move, when, when you're six foot three, six four, you, you know, drop step on somebody, it's a charge. If there's any contact, you always lose that battle. Uh, on, 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 on the foul side. And now at our level, she'll be able to play a lot more physical and it, 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 it's accepted. Yeah. You've been able to, to bridge from one, I'd say one leader, you know, in your career here, I guess from Angel to, to Shoney, you know, to Asian Maisha. How do you try to get this roster not to try so hard to, to match that with, while also trying to get the best out of them? Well, I mean, expectations are set. The bar is set. You know, our, our, our returning players know, hey, this is what's accepted here. This is what's expected here. So I think it's a good thing. You know, I think it's a good thing for them to realize what's been done in the past and challenge themselves to get to that. Um, but it, it, it's going to be a process. You know, we returned four starters from last year's team. Now you've got two or three back, but you do lose – Three pretty darn good players that could put the ball in the basket, come up with big plays. Um, so I, I think this spring and summer and then the fall is going to be where we can really start to decide whose roles are going to be what.